Welcome to Worshiping Online with Orient Congregational United Church of Christ. As we begin to worship together, I invite you to make a sacred space for yourself. Perhaps you were with us last week, and maybe you even left up your space, or not. Whatever symbols speak to your heart, you are invited to focus on during our times of silence during worship. I, I've been adding things, items to my space. Ash Wednesday, a few years ago, I was given this broken piece of pottery. It symbolizes the idea that out of our brokenness, we can receive healing, and it has a place in my sacred space. Our co-moderators, Diane and Cheryl, sent out an email this week and have invited you to share pictures or poems or stories we can share together during this time of physical isolation. If you like, you can send them a picture of your sacred space, sharing it with all of us. This morning, we'll be sharing prayers together, and I acknowledge it can seem funny or a bit uncomfortable saying prayers and sharing thoughts when you or perhaps one more person are alone in a room. But I invite you to give it a try. Today, we're going to celebrate worship by mixing in parts of an ancient form of worship called Lectio Divina. The sacred text we're going to read and consider today is Psalm 23, and in three different versions. The first version is from King James, one we don't usually use, but one many of us learned as children. And as you say the words with me, imagine the images that these words bring up and perhaps the memories from you when you first heard this psalm. So let us worship together and join in prayerfully saying Psalm 23. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointeth my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us sit in a moment of silence. Dr. Christine Waldner Paitner, in her book, Lectio Divina, The Sacred Art, describes Lectio as the practice of being present to each moment in a heart centered way. This morning, as we continued with our theme for Lent on the journey, we'll explore how does this psalm fit in. Let us continue. Continue with sharing with the young at heart, Psalm 23, a meditation. As we prepare to listen to Psalm 23 a second time, this version is from the book Everyday Psalms by the author James Taylor. Take a moment and breathe. Breathe at your own speed, breathe at your own depth. Settle back in your chair and be aware of how your body is making a connection. Focus on the sacred space you have made. Let us begin. God has walked with me. I could ask for nothing more. God has given me green meadows to laugh in, clear streams to think besides, untrodden paths to explore. When I thought, the world rested on my shoulders, God put things into perspective. When I lashed out at an unfair world, God calmed me down. 
When I drifted into harmful ways, God straightened me out. God was with me all the way. I do not know what lies ahead, but I am not afraid. I know you will be with me. Even in death, death, I will not despair. You will comfort and support me. Though my eye dims and my mind dulls, you will continue to care about me. Your touch will soothe the tension in my temples. My fears will fade away. I am content. In life and death, in life beyond death, God is with me. All through life, I have found goodness in people. When life ends, I expect to be gathered into the ultimate goodness of God. Take a few more breaths and join us back here in our virtual room and consider the words you just heard from the first two times we have shared this sacred text. What did you hear? What did you feel called to? If you're alone, you can say these images out loud. And if you're with another person, you can share the images that spoke to you. For me, in this time of most of us being physically separated, I heard this. God restored me. God calmed me. Ultimate goodness of God. Let us continue in a time of silent prayer, inviting God to join us in the silence. Our usual practice at the Orient Congregational UCC is to share the names in our bulletin and pray together. For privacy's sake, we're not going to do that exactly today, but with those with bulletins, you're welcome to pray for everyone on the list silently. For those joining us without bulletins, you have family, friends, and others you may be concerned about. Take this time to pray for them. Let us start in the silence that God has provided for us. God, we pray for the world we live in, for our country, for the leadership, for our church. We pray for the First Congregational Church of Riverhead, the members of our armed forces, firefighters, EMT, nurses, doctors, nurses' aid, everyone in that breach that's standing for us in hospitals, you know, God, even if I left somebody out, those engaged in law enforcement and people affected by war, hurricanes, and other disasters. For all of us in the different ways the novel coronavirus has affected us in this world we live in, we ask you, we ask you, God, to hear our prayers and that we can rest in your love and power as you are on this path that path that that shepherd led his people on so many years ago. You are with us on the path we live today and always. Traveling, God, as we journey through Lent together, 
Let us pray the prayer your son taught his followers so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the congregational response. Hear our prayer, O Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, incline thy ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. If you do have a bulletin and you take a look at it, you'll notice that today is the collection for the one great hour of sharing offering. The bulletin has several different ways to still be able to give and the regular offering for the church. Giving God, thank you for the different ways we're able to give and share during this time and always. Thank you for blessing this offering and your work it will be able to accomplish. Amen. As we prepare to listen to Psalm 23 for one more time, this time the Common English Bible version, let us take a moment and sit in the silence. Perhaps remember the earlier versions and the prayers we just prayed together. Consider the image, the inspiration, and the call to act you've already been considering. Settle back once again in your chairs and hear these words one more time. Take another breath and allow these words to flow over your hearts and souls this morning. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full, it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. May God bless the hearing and the listening to today's sacred text. We continue on the journey through Lent. And as many of you know, the Psalms one of my favorite places to rest in, especially in times of trouble. For the most part, the psalmist wrote for the community. They would be used in times of worship and gathering of all sizes. They were taught by parents to children and sung in worship. In times of joy, sorrow, peace, and unrest, the psalms were spoken and sung boldly. N.T. Wright, the author of The Case for the Psalms, Why They Are Essential, wrote, to recognize that the Psalms call us to pray and sing at the intersections of times, of our time and God's time, of the then and the now and the not yet, is to understand how those emotions are to be held within the rhythm of a life lived in God's presence. We are at an intersection where we find ourselves doing many things differently. 
including how we fellowship together in the community while physically apart. I invite you to consider what God is calling out to you to do. There are so many things that make a difference. I'm very thankful for Diane and Cheryl in making sure the Facebook link gets out to everyone. For others that make sure items are posted on Facebook, others that are emailing people or making phone calls. Priscilla's mailing out hard copies for those without access to the internet. We are all on this journey together. And again, Cheryl and, I, and Diane have suggested sending them poems, stories, and pictures that they can share with all of us. And I thought you could send a picture of your sacred space because they'll all look different. Some of my friends are sharing recipes. Perhaps that's their sacred space for those of us who are trying to figure out what to cook during this time. I was thinking how God set the table for us in front of my enemies and how at this time we can help each other set a table of welcome for each other, even at a distance. Thought about my father's mother and she used to cook Swedish meatballs for our family. She was born right outside of Stockholm. So there was many times I can remember we gathered, that was the main part of our meal. Now they took a while to prepare. You had to soak the breadcrumbs in the milk for at least a half an hour, adding the meat and the spices and put it in the refrigerator for at least two to three hours and then bake them. Now as a child, that was just great. Tasted great, it was just a wonderful time. And looking back as an adult, it was a big deal when my grandmother gave up making the meatballs and taught my mother, her daughter-in-law, how to make her special recipe. Over the years till my grandmother passed, she was very proud of my mother for taking this critical family recipe on. It was more than food. It was a part of our family. Another part of a family is the fact that so I've been a part of online groups for several years. One of them is called Sunday Night Peeps, and we meet on, yes, you got it, Sunday nights. And because we're across the country, some of us are preparing dinner, while other of us are struggling to keep our eyes open. But we meet, and we study together, pray, and check in. We usually work a week ahead on either the lectionary or a theme. And when someone is missing, we reach out to them online. This week we started with Psalm 23, and these are just a few of how I remember their thoughts. How God walks with us even when the shadows in life try to overtake us. When everything becomes too much, we can rest on God to be with us. The running theme that was shared by most of us was even when bad things happen, as they do, that God is faithful to walk, feed, comfort, and support each of us. And in light of that, I want to close with this prayer that was inspired by the readings today from Psalm 23. Shepherd God, thank you for calling me as your child to help each of us rest in your strength and protection, that even though we struggle to get through each day, your ways guide us and calm us. We are thankful for your love and courage to bolster us even when we start to trip. We thank you for all these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. And as we close today, May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.